My character's name is Annie and she's in her early 50s. She's a very gutsy woman, she's very raw, she's very truthful with the things that come from her mouth. And in context to where she is in the play, her mother has passed away and she's come home to claim or stake claim to a, fa a family heirloom and it's the table. And in doing so, she is brought together with her son that she hasn't seen for 25 years, who was raised by faith. And he's also come home to claim what he thinks is rightly his, the table. And through the conversation, through the arguments, through the silences, through the moments of looking at one another, they sort of unravel, I guess, their life of where they've been, where they've come from, what they've experienced to where they are now. And also a little bit of home truths about their upbringing from faith and what influenced her and how her mother's life before her influenced her. So it's very much a family drama. And although there's only three actors, everyone's sort of involved or has had an influence on who these people are today. The struggles my character faces are massive. <laughs> She's got a bit of a drinking problem, but it all stems back from, I guess, a, 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 a situation that happened with her when she was about 13 and her son was the outcome of what happened to her and then being so young and feeling that her mother wasn't there for her she decided to leave and find her own way in in the world so she's a she's a woman that has got so much life experience that the great clash between the intellect of Nathan who was good at school finished high school, ended up working for the Department of Foreign Affairs um, in Canberra. So to see their, their battle of the wits almost and intelligence and then pure pure life experiences is, 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 is pretty awesome too. And also him being younger as when he stops judging his mother and, and, and to see the transformation. His transformation through the play is a boy becoming the man or the man thinking he's the man when really he's only a boy, and then finally being stripped of all his emotional burdens, how he really feels about his mother, finding out some home truths, only, and then you sort of see him rebuild himself and he becomes a better man for it. Although any tells, gives him some home truths and they're pretty, pretty blunt, um, it, it, his journey is, is beautiful to see the boy become a man. And her journey for her is because of the situation or the circumstance that happened to her, there was a love-hate relationship with her, with, her, with her son, even just to look at him brought back these memories. So her journey is to overcome her fear and to love her son anyway. Um, when I was auditioning Nathan, I actually auditioned about eight other men. Um, and it was really hard for Nathan because he was the very first guy you know, to, to come through my front door. And I guess also for me, because it was the first audition, I was thinking, what do I want from him? And so it was a little bit hit and miss, you know, I think on both of our parts. But, and it's always that, that, that dread of, oh, will she forget what I've done, you know? Um, but I recorded it, of course, and I didn't look at any of them until I looked at everyone. And I sat down and wanted to look at them with a fresh eye, and I did. And every time I sort of, I culled them back, what I didn't like about him or what he didn't fit or what was too great or, you know, whatever it was. There was always something that sort of I put a ticker across, nothing personal. Um, but that's the process of, of getting through it. And every time I would... Nathan actually was probably sitting on the bottom and he just bumped people off. Every time I, I'd look at one and then I'd go back and look at Nathan did and I said, gee, there's just something about him. And it was down to the final two and... and um, yeah, Nathan just came home. I think it was because he underplayed everything and that's what Nathan's character um, is. And it's, it's very hard to underplay something in a theatre piece. Um, so I really liked how he did that. His voice is phenomenal. And um, yeah, and, and, just, and the fact that he actually lives in Canberra. <laughs> and he was a young fellow that came from Darwin and moved down there. So he actually had that bit of an experience, like this, the character Nathan coming from an island, very um, uh, isolated place, and there's that sort of protection around it or naivety to, to people's thoughts. And then to go straight to Canberra, concrete jungle, 
of and the politics. Um, so he had sort of experienced that. So he had a little bit of personal experience there that 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 sort of shone through. And he wears a suit great. And Roxy. Roxy, yeah, Roxanne McDonald was in the first production with me. There was another production done of this where I just acted. Um, and I look, I've been a big fan of Roxy's for a long time and I've, it's been a privilege and a pleasure to have worked with her on other productions. And, um, you know, the bottom line is I, I couldn't cast anyone but Roxy. It's Brisbane. <laughs> you know, I would have been shunned out of town. But Roxy um, is, is, is amazing as an actor. She knew the role because of what we'd done previous, but we've had such a f- wonderful journey on this discovering a whole new, is that a word, newness to it. And that's been the, 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 the beauty of it. And um, I, always, I also call it, we, we sprinkle a bit of black pepper. It's the flavour of Aboriginality, you know. We could really play on that. And it's been beautiful as a process. We're all picking from family members, you know. And, but what I love about it is the opportunity that we've both had to really dive deep into this play from a true black perspective. Because there's only so much you can give as an actor when you're not, if the director's got their own vision, because they've got their own vision for it. And there's only so much an actor can give and then the director's got to pull them over the line because we're there to fill in their picture that they're creating. Um, And of course, Roxy and I gave that in the first production, but with this one, we could actually go deeper because it's that Aboriginality, that, 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 that that black, that black anchor to the piece is, is a lot more um, present. But in saying that, this is such a universal story. You don't have to be black or Aboriginal to get this. Um, Wesley had done a production of this in Japan, I think it was, yeah, many a couple of years ago, and they loved it. And it, they put obviously their little sprinkle of, of, of flavour on it. But um, no, it's very much a universal story. I've got um, some creatives, my key creatives, some of them aren't Aboriginal, and they just said, I get this because I know Annie. She's like an auntie of mine, and that's and that's what good writing is. That's what good storytelling is, when you can, when it's a universal story and everyone can be touched by it. But this one, we've just got a little bit of black pepper on it. It could have been vanilla essence in something else, or a little bit of soya sauce. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm lucky to, I've worked with Wesley um, as an actor being directed by Wesley and also I've worked on um, a few of his, his plays that he's written, Seven, um, Seven Stages of Grieving and now Cookie's Table as a director in that sense. And I think Cookie's Table is, is um, one of Wesley's probably finest writing and I think it's just, and he would say that too, you know, this has won awards and he said I was really in the zone um, when I was writing this. And I think what a good... What a, what a good script is, is when it's like a template for where this story needs to start, how it, how it is in the middle and where you need to get to at the end. But good writing also allows you to fill it in. A director with vision can, can fill it in and fatten it out and make it live beyond the page. And I think, and I think that's what Cookie ta- Cookie's Table does. And to come at it, to make it universal for everyone is clever. It, it, there's... there's there's stuff in there when in the first production and even in this production, we're sort of going, oh, wow, he means that. But it is so much more deeper than what's just written there, but it's, but it's clues. And a good script is where you can start with a clue, answer it, bring it back in, and then just use it throughout. And it just, it just makes for the whole, the viewing of it and the understanding of it so much more easier. That, so you can be emotionally you know, drawn through the, through the piece. He, he's a clever boy, busy boy too. The reason I think people should come and see this show is because it's a bloody good show. Now, I'm not just saying that because I'm in it and I'm directing it, but to me, theatre is about being moved. It's not about you sitting in a chair for an hour and a half or two hours and going, I'm at the theatre and I'm somebody. We're, we're, we're rearranging the cremorne so it's so intimate, we could almost sit on your lap. And on nights, you might end up sit with me on your lap. But it, it's, it's intelligent writing. It's a story that's universal. It's fine acting in it. And even if, even if you're um, a person that's a, a, a theatre regular, you, you'll love it. 
And even if you're a punter for the first time, if you want to have a good laugh, if you want to be emotionally moved and experience what real theatre and good theatre is about, Cookie, Cookie Tables is the one to come and see.